The 2016 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to a trio of British scientists, Duncan Haldane, Michael Kostelitz and David Thaulis for their work on so-called exotic states of matter. Under certain conditions, such as very low temperatures, a material can undergo a sudden, unexpected switch in behaviour. One morning in February 1980, a German physicist, Klaus von Klitzing, was experimenting with a supercooled, ultra-thin sliver of silicon in a powerful magnetic field, when he noticed something bizarre. The silicon had begun conducting electricity only in packets of certain sizes. A smallest size packet, a packet exactly twice as big, three times as big, and so on, or nothing at all. There were no in-between amounts, as you get with an ordinary electrical current. The phenomenon is known as the Quantum Hall Effect, and von Klitzing won the 1985 Nobel Prize in Physics for shedding new light on it. Evidently, the silicon had jumped into some new physical state in which, as happens whenever there's a change of state, there must have been a rearrangement of atoms. Theorists, however, struggle to explain how such a rearrangement could take place in a layer of silicon so thin that the atoms within it had no room to move up and down. Then Kostelitz and Tholus came up with a novel idea. As the silicon cooled, they suggested, swirling pairs of silicon atoms formed and then spontaneously separated into two miniature vortices at the critical temperature of the transition. Thaulus set to work on the maths behind these spinning transitions and found that it could best be formulated in terms of a branch of the subject known as topology. The electrons in the material undergoing the change were forming what's known as a topological quantum fluid, a state in which they flowed collectively only in integer steps. Working independently, Haldane found that these fluids can spontaneously appear in ultra-thin layers of semiconductors, even in the absence of strong magnetic fields. After the announcement of the 2016 prize, a member of the Nobel Committee stood up and drew from a paper bag a cinnamon bun, a bagel, and a Swedish pretzel. These were different, he pointed out, in a number of ways. In flavour, for instance, sweet or salty, and general appearance. But to a topologist, only one of their differences mattered, the number of holes. Zero in the bun, one in the bagel, two in the pretzel. The winners of the prize, he explained, had found a way to link the sudden appearance of exotic physical states to changes in topology, effectively the holiness of the underlying abstract structures. In doing so, they'd found a new and tremendously important application for a subject that has spawned some of the most surprising results in mathematics. Take two prints of the same picture. Put one of them down flat on a table, then crumple up the other any way you like, providing you don't actually tear it, and place it somewhere on top of the uncrumpled print. It's an inescapable fact that at least one point on the crumpled copy will lie directly over the corresponding point on the flat picture. Strictly speaking, the maths we're talking about here deals with continuous quantities, whereas in the real world, matter is grainy because it's made of atoms and so forth, but the result is still valid to a very good approximation. The same thing is true in three dimensions, so if you stir a glass of water for however long you want, at least one water molecule will be in the same position after stirring as before. The first mathematician to publish a proof of this was the Dutchman Leutzmann Brewer in the early years of the 20th century, and so it's become known as Brewer's Fixed Point Theorem. Another curious result, first proved by Brewer in 1912, though it had been proposed earlier by the prolific French mathematician Henri Poincaré, is the hairy ball theorem. This states that no matter how much you comb a ball entirely covered with hair, it's impossible to make the hair lie flat at every point. Somewhere it must be sticking straight up. 
Brewer didn't actually talk about hairy balls, but less evocative stuff about continuous vector fields tangent to a sphere that must have at least one point where the vector is zero, but it amounts to the same thing. In more practical terms, because the velocity of wind along Earth's surface is a vector field, the theorem guarantees that there has to be somewhere on the planet where the wind isn't blowing. Another truism closely related to the fixed point theorem and known as the borsuk ulam theorem has something else to say about meteorological conditions. At any given moment there exist two points on opposite sides of the planet with exactly the same temperature and barometric pressure. You might say that this is likely to happen quite a lot just by chance, but the borsuk ulam theorem guarantees mathematically that it's bound to be the case. Yet another strange but true fact follows from the borsuk ulam theorem, the so-called ham sandwich theorem. Make a sandwich from ham and cheese, and this result says that it's always possible to slice the sandwich in such a way that the two parts have an equal amount of bread, cheese and ham. In fact, the three ingredients don't even have to be touching. The bread could be in the bread bin, the cheese in the fridge and the ham on the kitchen counter or for that matter they could be in different parts of the galaxy. There's always going to be one flat slice, in other words a plane, that bisects each one of them.